So um, my name is Brooks. Everybody calls me Brooks. Um, I represent Alba Energy. We are a solar PV firm that's recently set up shop in uh, McAllen, Texas. We're based out of Austin, Texas. Uh, Alba uh, comes from the fact that the CEO is originally from Scotland. That's a Gaelic word for Scotland. I know there's some Spanish ties to the word here, but uh, uh, it is uh, not from here. Although us being in the valley is, is actually a very exciting thing for me. Um, I've given a presentation already. I don't know if anyone was here for that. It, it was kind of disjointed. It was all over the place. This one is probably no different. Um, <laughs> most of it is because we're still piecing together what solar means for the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, I do have some new information, some very exciting information, at least on the finance side. Uh, my background is in engineering. Um, my, my former role at ALBA when I was officing out of Austin was director of commercial operations. Um, Right now, we have no commercial operations in South Texas to speak of, other than a handful of projects. So basically, my role right now is business development. So I'm here to figure out, does solar work? I have a hunch it does. I wouldn't be down here if I didn't think it did. Um, and I'm going to, I have basically 10 minutes to get through 20 slides. So I'm going to hurry up as much as I can. Uh, just going through here, these are some examples of some of the work we've done. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen a solar PV system up close, this just gives you an idea of the scale. These modules are standard 60 cell modules. They're about five and a half feet tall and three and a half feet wide. Most of the projects we do are below the 250 kilowatt range, which is roughly three or 400 modules and below. Although we see some things changing here very quickly, especially for the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, this is a, just an example of the inverter, so we'll get to this point later, but what you see here are four separate inverters all synced, tied together, all outputting 277 volt three-phase power. Uh, I won't go into detail on that. So let's just start off with kind of where the country's energy consumption comes from. One of the funnier things I thought about when I saw this graph is that wood is up front and center. And for those of you not think of wood as a fuel source, it absolutely was, certainly below 1850. The other funny part about that is if you look kind of up here at the top, there's a point about 10 years ago where wood was more of a prevalent fuel source in the US than solar was. That I also thought was pretty funny, a little sad too. But that's changing rapidly, it's hard to see. You can see just in the last 12 years or so how that green just kind of expanded and we're gonna see more of that. Um, going back to the fuel sources, when we talk about fuel, we're really talking about a fuel source, not a power source. Uh, when we plug something into the wall and we get electricity, most of that fuel is converted, um, uh, is converted to electricity through a fairly complicated process. Uh, the main differentiator between solar and most any other type of electrical generation is most electrical generation requires a mode of force. So you've got, in the case of a steam turbine, you've got a fuel source, whether that's wood, coal, gas, gasoline, what have you, that heats water, which is pressurized, which turns a turbine, and then in turn turns a generator. Uh, this is fairly problematic for most people because not everyone can own a large scale production plant, and not everyone can staff and maintain these systems to the degree that they're required. They're also pretty lossy. Um, Solar, on the other hand, is different. And when I go back to this, I'll, I'll talk about motive sources. Wind, hydro, hydroelectric, and tidal forces all use mechanical motion to convert that to electricity. Solar, uh, solar photovoltaic, which is what we primarily install, uh, does not have any moving parts whatsoever. Uh, in most cases, you may have a coolant fan. But you don't need to change mechanical motion into electrical motion. You take photon and convert that to direct electricity. That has extreme implications for microgeneration and on-site generation. It means you can build very cost-effective power plants that don't require a whole lot of maintenance, a whole lot of upkeep, which is why you see solar as a distributed generation source gaining more prevalence. The scalability is also another one of those features. A basic breakdown of how a PV system works, you have two major components. You have the PV array, which generally converts power um, uh, photons into electrical current flow on the DC side, much like a battery. You have a positive terminal and a negative terminal. I won't go into detail there. 
you transmit that DC power somehow to an inverter, and I'm not going to go into all the technologies. There's all sorts of different ways to get that power through an inverter. They have microinverters that exist on the back of each module. You have DC optimizers, which have a power converter on the back of each module, and then convert the power later down the line. This is a traditional strain inverter where you have a DC PV array, a DC line, and then conversion of the AC power from the inverter. From there, your power goes into your building loads, and the inverters are capable of outputting power at a frequency and at, at they're close enough to the source that if your building is drawing power, it'll draw first from the PV array. And, and to clarify what we install, Alba Energy solely focuses on grid-tied solar PV that works in parallel. These systems work while the grid is connected and only while the grid is connected, and we generally avoid batteries for these systems. And when you start adding batteries to a PV array, you end up incurring some additional costs associated with the maintenance. Batteries, as of right now, don't last that long. From there, you have your electrical service component as well. Uh, we'll get into later in the discussion about what happens when you produce more power than you're consuming. But this is a general setup. Uh, one thing to note about what makes solar good and the technology that, that promotes solar as an installation and as an industry is that the way these inverters function is they're a lot different than a generator. If we go back to this diagram, these generators have to turn at a certain frequency and they have to be synced to the grid. And only when they're synced to the grid can they be engaged to provide power to the grid. Uh, solar PV being a digital system in most cases, the inverters are capable of instantaneously modulating the output, so they can sync to the grid automatically, which is actually one of the requirements of a solar PV inverter. For it to be grid-tied and parallel with your existing grid power, it has to be capable of sending power through your building while at the same time not interfering with the power coming from the grid. Um, this is a basic breakdown. If anybody wants to get a little bit more detail, you can see the DC side, positive and negative. These are connected in series. As you do so, you have the voltage of each module. Uh, primarily what we install are, are modules within the voltage range of 30 to 60 volts. Um, you've got some code requirements that dictate how long these strings can be. Um, from there, you have some disconnect equipment that's a safety feature, generally fused disconnect. You have an inverter, and then you have your building loads. Uh, this is a much less complicated connection system than you would see for a large power plant. Um, these are very, very maintenance free. And like I said, now we, very, we don't really have any moving parts. Here is an active example. Uh, this isn't real time, but this was taken a few weeks ago from an install here in the gallon that we did recently. The red area represents your consumption in kilowatt hours. Those spikes in the red represent your AC system turning off and on. You can also see the difference between the nighttime loads and 6 a.m. when the building systems kick on and the building's occupied. Uh, each building is going to have its own profile based on the way it's used. A residential home that has a mother and four kids at the house will have a very high daytime load as well as a, a somewhat high nighttime load. Most homes that are occupied only at night will have a, a peak right when someone gets home up through to about 12 midnight and then it'll drop off till 6 a.m. Um, what you also see here is our solar PV offset. This, this green line represents the PV production of a, of a small 5 kilowatt system uh, overlaid on top of the building consumption. And what you see in white there is the effective chunk that, of consumption that the PV system is provided for the building. Are we doing okay on time? Yeah. Five minutes. I can hurry. PV fits in every one of these locations. Another reason why it's scalable. Uh, down from your home to your industrial to uh, uh, commercial to industrial, all the way to power plant side systems. Um, this is a kind of a basic example. This shows an average day daily PV production for uh, each month overlaid on an actual building's consumption profile. Uh, this is one of the modeling graphs we use to determine system size and whether or not we're going to back feed. Um, uh, getting into the kind of finance portion of this, this is generally a boring topic for me, but since it pays my, my bills now, I, I don't mind talking about it. The value of solar comes from the fact that you own a relatively low cost, low, low maintenance power production system. And as we anticipate electric costs to rise, which they have done historically since we've started selling electricity, your value of your system gets better over time. You purchase a PV array, you've paid for it outright, or you paid for it through some loan term. 
and that basically levelizes your cost of energy. So if I install a TV around my home that covers 50% of my home's offset, from the minute I turn that TV array on, I've locked in my electric rate for that half of my, my building consumption. The problem with solar is for most people, it's, it's not very attainable, um, at least immediately. There's a very, very large cash outlay. So if we plot our, our system value over time, we'll pay for it the first year, we're in the negative, and as that system produces power, it slowly shows its benefit. Getting to this point here is, is very difficult for most people. You sell a system, they're going to want to see a payback in about three years. We can do that in a rebate location like Austin. We can't do that really in the Rio Grande Valley. Well, what has happened recently, and this is literally within the last week, we have a new option for financing. And I wouldn't be talking about this if I didn't think it was significant for the industry. Uh, PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. This is really only applicable to projects over half a million dollars. But what it does allow business owners to do is invest in alternative energy, energy efficiency upgrades. That loan they take out to pay for that system is a low interest rate loan. This is supported by the state of Texas. It's a house bill that, that came out of Austin. Right now there's only two counties in the, in the state that allow this option. Uh, one of them down here, I can't remember which of the three, and then Travis County. The other two counties will be coming online in the next few weeks. What does this mean for solar? Well, Zero out-of-pocket costs, um, you have immediate positive cash flow. Uh, it also means that you, you pay for this loan on your tax roll. This system now becomes part of your building tax. It is not on the balance sheet. It doesn't affect your line of credit. It also means that if you want to sell this system down the line, it sells with the building. You don't own a separate liability on the, the ownership of the system. Uh, this is very, very detailed, but if you look in this column here, red represents anything you're going to pay, green is basically the benefit you get. And we have two scenarios that show what this means. This is a half a million watt system. This rough cost of the system is $1.3 million. If you were to pay for this outright, you would be negative um, $832,000 in your first year. And that's after almost a $400,000 tax credit and a $80,000 appreciation credit. We apply the PACE financing option to this, and I, I don't work for PACE, this is something that benefits my industry. Uh, promoting this is something I'm gonna be doing heavily the next few months because I think it's, it's great. Um, if you can pay for this with a low interest rate financing, 4.5% and a 25 year loan term, because these PV arrays are generally warranty for 25 years, you can work out a scenario where your loan payments are much, much less than the production value of the system. And that's true for the Valley. This is a scenario we ran just a week ago. This means that you no longer are suffering this big drop in payment here. You've got positive class cash flow from day one that exponentially gets better up the next few years. It means at the end of the day, this system you're making about $35,000 a year on top of nothing, actually. You, you basically come out 35 grand. Okay, what does this mean? Well, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up now. I don't bring out of time. I did this model this weekend. This is a, an actual business here in the Valley. Can't say where it's still in discussion. This is a 23,000 module system. I in my life have not done an analysis for a system this big. This is 6.2 megawatt. The roof portion of this alone would make this one of the largest 20 rooftop installations in the country. If we added all of this ground cover, which is roughly 15 acres of solar, um, you're looking at one of certainly the largest commercial industrial application of solar in Texas. This only provides 40% power offset, which really doesn't matter. If we're talking about cash flow, the owner of this system would pay financing, even though they're paying roughly 14, 15 million dollars for the system, they're gonna end up with a $70,000 a month electric production value. They pay, just keep in mind, about $200,000 a month in electricity. After they pay their loan payment and interest, uh, they're, they're left with a $20,000 per month savings. So this is money in the business owner's pocket from month one. Uh, to give you a scale of what the system looks like, this is our production modeling overlay, the red line, the building consumption. Uh, keep in mind, this is only about a 40% offset. The reason being is solar really only produces when the sun's out, and this business runs 24 hours a day, so there's no difference in their daytime, nighttime consumption. 
Uh, the only way to give them 100% offset is to increase our system size up to 20 megawatts. I think we'll run out of space before we get there. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. What this means is for the industry, we're going to start seeing much, much larger systems, which means that graph that shows solar as, as a portion of our energy production capacity in the U.S. is going to increase that much greater. Um, you know, even in Austin, we're limited to roughly 200 kilowatts for most systems. That's just the way the rebate structure works. No business owner in their right mind is going to shove up $15 million for a system that isn't going to pay back in the first four or five years. Um, I know that was kind of all over the place. Uh, I will be speaking more about this uh, later on. Again, my name's Brooks. I'm with Alba Energy. If anybody wants to see me at my office, we're 601 North Main in the Gallant, uh, the tech incubator space, which is where I ran into the Code RGB group, and it's a lot of fun up there, by the way. Just come and hang out if you want. We've got all sorts of fun tools and stuff to play with. Uh, I mean, probably over time, but if anybody has questions, uh, I'd like to answer them. So you're uh, pretty much with uh, what Alba is doing down here is really directed towards the commercial stuff. You're not really doing any residential? No, we are. Um, you know, we have, right now, the office consists of me and one other person, uh, the GM for the Austin market for a previous company. We, we basically opened our doors about six to eight weeks ago. Uh, we do have a few residential clients in queue, but the residential sales are a bit more difficult. Um, it's a bit longer term, still ramping up. Yes, we are building both the residential and commercial uh, business here. I don't know a oh. whole lot about the uh, company in uh, Austin. Could you give us uh, how things have gone there? Um, you, you mean uh, the company or the Alba. market in general? Alba. Um, well, Alba's a fairly new company. Uh, you know, we've, we've been around for a little over a year. Most of the company is formed uh, with the labor and, and talent from a few other solar companies. Uh, about half of us came from another company called Circular Energy. Uh, we've tagged on to Alba and we're trying to start something new and different. We are the first, at least company that I know from Austin, who's set up a base of operations here. That would make the only two offices we have are in McAllen and Austin. Um, I'm glad we got here before the pace rollout. I think it's going to be very, very beneficial, but we'll have to prove that out in a few months. Cool. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, the figure of 25 years for the panels, is that a new technology? The last time I looked at it, it was seven or eight years. Well, um, panels now, the ones, the UL panels we sell are all warranted for 25 years, and that is a production warranty. They guarantee that at year 20, in most cases, the panel will still be able to output about 90% of its power. By year 25, you can expect that to go down to 80. And is that a, a warranty like the Tesla battery warranty that it really means they'll replace it for you, or does it, is it an actual be expected to last that long? That, we expect them to last that long. Um, systems proving out now, we have modules that have been in operation for 40, 50 years. Now, time will tell, right? A lot of these companies are new. Uh, we sell two modules, a German manufacturer, uh, and uh, LG makes a module that's a very, very high efficiency, at least for what we have now. They're all warranted for 25 years. Yes, sir. I, I heard that the uh, federal tax rebate of 30% will be finished next year? Yes, it actually, uh, we hear that too. Uh, another reason why we're down here now is there is a sense of urgency. Now, I personally don't think the tax credit is going to go away. And keep in mind, just to reiterate, a homeowner, you as a taxpayer, entitled to a 30% system tax credit. So if you pay $10,000 for a system, you can expect by the end of that year to get about a $3,000 tax credit. Now that is a credit to what you owe. It's not a line item deduction. So if you owe $5,000 in taxes, you'll only owe $2,000 in taxes at the end of the year. Um, businesses can take that 30% tax credit as well as a depreciation credit. And that means that you as a business owner can depreciate things like a vehicle or a computer. Uh, it's service life goes down over time, so you get a tax credit for that. Combined for a business, those two tax credits will give you about a 40% system reduction in cost at the end of the first four years of its operation. Those are slated to go away at the end of next year. I think they'll probably get reduced. There's a, there's a big industry right now, my industry is somewhat supported on those tax credits, but I don't think them, that they'll get yanked out from under us right away. I do see them tapering off, as they should. Solar's gotten much cheaper. The credits are there to help the industry. I don't, I don't think they should be a crutch. Yes, sir. Regarding energy providers, do you guys have, as Alba, Alba is a company itself, do you guys have any subcontracts 
let's say, with energy providers. I know many energy providers here in the Valley don't uh, refund any energy <coughs> provided, only like two or three. Yes, uh, Magic Valley Electric Cooperative, Brownsville Electric Cooperative, offers what's called net metering. And net metering means, if we go back to the graph, um, anytime you, you go above the red, you're sending power back into the grid. There's not a requirement for the power companies in the state of Texas to pay you anything but the fuel rate for that production, which means you, in most cases you only get half the value if you send back to the grid. Uh, there's some stipulations, some allow what has recently happened, and I'm not sure if this is true for commercial, uh, Green Mountain Electric Cooperative has recently offered net metering unlimited. Um, they offer, you know, you have to switch to their plan, but they'll allow you to install solar and they'll basically, we can offset up to 100% of your home's consumption with those plans, uh, which is a big thing for the Valley considering we really have no rebates here. Any other questions? How are you marketing, marketing your products? Yeah, or? yeah um, it's kind of a closed marketing right now. You know, we're a small operation down here. Solar has a very, very big pull. It's very, very large interest. Um, we made the mistake originally by advertising too broadly and being inundated with a lot of people that just wanted to know about solar and not necessarily interested in buying. So until we have a ramp up of a capable crew that can process large volume, we deal with about 20 to 30 leads a week right now. Our marketing is selected. We're focusing primarily on high net worth residential, at least to prove the concept, and commercial. Uh, as we ramp up, we're gonna be offering the same type of marketing as we do in Austin. Uh, right now, it's a bit too much for two people to filter through 100 to 200 leads a week. Are there any opportunities for students or uh, research that you guys are looking for or anything along those lines? We're, we're here to hire. Um, you know, I, I need to get a team together as soon as I've got the work to justify it. We have about five or six residential projects that we've accumulated over the last four or five weeks. Uh, we're gonna be doing an initial training push with our Austin team and hiring locally on the install side. But I do need to hire here. Once our projects get going, I need CAD designers, I need an electrical engineer, I need some capable field managers. Um, when we're, when we're up to the, the volume that we expect to be, I expect the McAllen office to be between 15 and 20 people. But yes, I will be reaching out to you. I, I've got a good connection. Um, and I feel it's my obligation, given all the help we've been given by the McAllen EUC, the city of McAllen, uh, I, I absolutely have to return that favor. And, uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be working in the Rio Grande Valley. I'm very, very excited to say that I think solar's going to work well down here. Time will tell, but um, I brought my whole family down here, so we better make it work. <laughs> but you're originally from the valley, right? Yeah, um, I'm actually from here. I was born in McAllen. I grew up here. My uh, grandfather was an educator here at this same university uh, back from 1950 to 1983. Uh, my mom works for the Edgar School District. My sister works for the McAllen School District. My parents live in Donna. I'm mostly from the valley. Uh, it took me a few years to come back, but uh, it seems like I came back to a completely different so I am glad to be here. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you.